It's radical. Radical. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Radical Computer Solutions YouTube channel. My name is Tom, and welcome back to Tron Identity. I uh, hope you're all having a fantastic uh, day today. Hopefully everything sounds good. I uh, messed with some sound setting or you know microphone settings, so hopefully think hopefully things sound a little a little better than last time. But anyway, let's uh, get right back into it. Uh, let's see. I don't even remember where we left off. Um, no more questions. Okay, that's good. I don't remember what I was asking you anyway. We need to get back to Prince. I do. Good luck out there. He gestures toward the elevator. You take the hint and leave. Hopefully he can keep his side of things together. Uh, let me see. I think I was just in the lobby. Um, let's try going back to the vault. Let's see what happens there. The vault as much as you left it. Outside the falling debris of the explosion... Uh, I'm sorry, outside, the falling debris of the explosion have, have stopped, and the room has begun to cool from the rain and wind outside. Uh, Cass stands by the hole in the vault wall. They look more confident than you remember. More ready. Hello, Query. You okay? They turn to you. Not at all, no, but I appreciate you asking. They reach out into the void. The rain feels... Uh, the rain feels peculiar to me. It shouldn't. It's rain. Most common thing on the grid, right? It comes and goes. So why is it so strange? They withdraw their arm, wipe it dry on their robes. It's cold out there. Especially so tonight. That's strange to me too, the sensation. They walk over to you. I apologize. Ignore me. Everything feels strange right now. They are clearly still suffering from the damage they took in the explosion. How goes the investigation? Uh, I still don't know the fundamentals of the case. No, I've not been much help, have I? You smile and attempt to reassure them. Hopefully I can help you learn more before that thief causes more trouble. You heard about Proxy? I did, from Prince. He made Grish bring him here to meet me. Apparently he had to see me for himself. He seemed scared. Prince, I mean. Grish seemed to be quite excited by the idea of a fight. It's endlessly fascinating to you how fast information travels in confined spaces. Ironic to see the same in a place so defined by secrecy. She poses no risk to you. I dealt with the issue. Dealt? You say nothing. Cass seems frustrated. Whatever I was guarding, it's safe to assume I failed in my task. I can't let that happen again. We don't know anything yet. I know I failed. This is not uncommon among victims of crime. The need to con contextualize themselves as active participants by assigning themselves blame. Claw, black, claw back some autonomy. Victims are usually blameless. Sometimes, though. Need to find out what was stolen. Okay. If you not, they remove their desk and hand it to you. Their hands are shaking. You scared? Yes, a little, of what we'll find out. They smile bravely. I want to know the truth of this just as much as you do. More possibly. You take their disc. It's cold from the window. A thin sheen of rainwater coats its surface. The disc holds an answer. Hey, look, I did it. Hey. New memory, light, and sound. 
White light, heat rippling outwards in waves. Light punches past white into a brightness unimaginable. A rumble growing into a roar, transforming into a scream. Silence, darkness, a hum, a sizzle, everything, nothing. Okay. You hand the disc back, and Cass replaces it on their back. Over here I can uh, interact with. Another vault? Below you spot another vault among many. There's no telling how many are stowed away in this space. What could be in each of them? Core have kept a tight lid in, on innovation and free thinking for hundreds of cycles. The detective in your code aches to uncover their mysteries. You wonder how and why the thief chose to steal the contents of this specific vault. What made them overlook the one above? Inside knowledge? A blind guess. Their eyes flash as they sink. Silence. Anything? They look at you. No. They look uncomfortable. Frustrated. I don't know what was stolen, or who stole it, or... Nothing at all? No, no. Tears swell in Cass's eyes. I want to be helpful, I really do. I want to be the one who crashed the case and finds out what happened here with you. I know there's something in there. I'm missing it. You know they want to help. This is heartbreaking. Cass falls to their knees, shaken. You kneel down to join them. I don't remember anything or anyone. I was alone in the vault. An explosion. Oblivion. Wait. Did they... You are alone? Realization dawns on Cass's face. I was alone. New information. Not much, but something to build on. Uh, let's see. Someone had been hiding in here with you? Cass thinks back, tries to remember. In a room this dark, their light would have been easy to spot. But maybe? Doesn't add up. Yeah. You help cast back to the game. We'll get there. I hope so. It's a way away, though. For now, they're right. But you have something to, something to ask the others about now, at least. Do you have any suspects at all? I had one, but he has an alibi. No need to tell, tell Cass about his question. Or that you refuse, refuse his request. Is Prince still in hiding? You're not. No need to share more for now. You think back to that empty office. The detritus of a program. You hope to see him there again. The proxy de -res, that seems a bit a safe bet. Cass nods and looks back to the window. I think I'd like to be alone for a little while, if that's okay. I have to try and remember something more. Anything, really. You respect their request and leave as the vault continues to cool. Hmm. Well, at least we got something. Um, go back to the lobby and see if we can't get uh, Prince out of out of his hidey hole. The lobby is empty. The energy falls remain beautiful. Energy falls. Following the Great Drought, Core takes great pride in its ability to collect and refine more energy than the grid needs. These energy falls ostentatiously celebrate the enormous resources consolidated by Core in the last few hundred cycles. Energy flows from the top of the repository, via the library, to the lobby, and back again in a cycle representing Core's hierarch hierarchical superiority, via data, data management, over the population of the ARC server. Hey, arc server. Such, gr uh, such grand architectural statements irritate you. They ob obfuscate and clumsily attempt to distract from more complex truths. Okay. Nice place to visit on a calmer night. Okay, guess not there. Got the 
lobby, get to vault. Admin office, landing pad. Um, I guess we'll turn back to the library. The library is as vibrant as ever, but there's nothing to do here at the moment. Okay. <laughs> I guess I won't be going there. I guess we should make sure the landing pad is uh, secure. The rain is deafening now, like the users of themselves are mocking the hubris this place represents. But the landing pad isn't as empty as when you saw it last. Uh -oh. Through the rain, you see a silhouette. It is Prince, with Grish beside him. He yells above the noise and beckons you over. So this is where our interloper made her move. That's right, right where you're standing. Prince looks around himself, a look of distaste on his face. A cold place to cease one's function. Grish laughs. She ended her process in the way she ran, small and pathetically outmatched. Indeed. Prince looks a little sad. It is disappointing to see the way in which the grid can shape programs to make us function suboptimally. Grish snorts. From where I'm standing, you acted to protect, to protect your investigation and the repository as a whole. I owe you a great debt. You hand Prince the disc you took from Broxton. From the moment you arrived, I knew you would do what had to be done. I am immensely pleased to be proven right. Krishna. You've learned a lot from me tonight. I'm a little proud to see you do what was necessary. Prince reaches out a hand to shake yours. Are our operations synchronized? They always were, my friend. Prince smirks. On this landing pad, you proved it. He shapes her hand. Grish watches, amused. Where are we on the case program? Uh, let's see. Cass was alone when the explosion happened. That only makes things more confusing. Prince laughs. You have a point there, but maybe it also gestures at some potential explanations. Some kind of remote trigger, maybe? You know, certainly possible. Prince looks up at the storm clouds above. Tonight isn't getting any more hospitable. We should return back inside. Trish nods, and they make their way back towards the warm feather repository. The repository is immediately surrounded by parks and public galleries. Core have learned over hundreds of cycles that the soft power they enjoy relies on engagement and cultural buy-in from the community. By curating and sharing the data they validate, they have turned a system of control into a public utility. Beyond the park, Vertical Slice is a bustling pub, the oldest part of the city, but also its cultural and infrastructural center. Cool. Prince turns as he approaches the entrance. One more thing, Barry. Yes? Before we went to Grisha's favorite little hidden space in the repository, I asked him to escort me to visit your witness, Cass. Okay. We spoke a little. Pleasantries, really. I like to be welcoming to the Corps Honor Guard. I am, after all, their host. They were, of course, having the exact memory issues one would expect from someone as close as they were to the explosion, so it was a brief conversation. It was, however, enough time for me to make a little deduction of my own. Go on. I take it upon myself to meet every Corps officer who visits my facility. I know every face. I don't know Cass's face. Ooh! Clock thickens. Grish rinses. I should have asked questions. Prince smirks. Ah, don't beat yourself up, old boy. Your single-minded focus on your work is admirable. A few details are bound to be missed along the way. 
Now we must go back inside before the rain gets any this rain gets any worse. They go back in, leaving you out on the landing pad. Scene of your own crime. You have a leap. That's something. Allow an important program to be taken. Let's go to Prince's office and see what he's got to say. Everything is where you left it. Prince stands at his desk, working on something with his back to you. Who's this? A beautiful desk sits in the middle of the office. Ornate light carvings reflect the circuitry of the first NCOM server, gesturing to the very earliest history of our kind. You suspect it's not something Prince uses often, more of a statement piece. Light flows across its surface, with particles floating upwards. It's more of an altar than a desk, like everything else in the room. It is created to celebrate and elevate the users. And Prince lives in their shadow, or from his perspective, perhaps in their light. I'm a little busy, Query. Come back later. Okay. Let's go back to the vault. See if we can't get any more info out of uh, Cass over here. He, re he returns to the vault, a little shaken by recent events. It's as cold in here as the landing pad, but at least it's drier. Ooh, what's this? Energy bridge. Uh, the crystallization of energy into solid barriers and surface is standard on the grid, but some vestigial instinct in your code makes you uncomfortable stepping out onto one. You understand that vertigo is ridiculous in this context, and yet it lingers. This bridge is un yeah, uniquely... Wow. Sorry, guys. This bridge is uniquely uncomfortable, given its extension across the broken detritus of the vault. You're taking more risks than you used to. Gas is waiting, walks up to you as you enter. You okay, Query? Strange to be the one in need of comfort, but Cass has obviously noticed something in your demeanor. Lots happening. I've heard programs whispering. I assume you'll tell me when you think you need to. I'm sure it'll be okay. You nod. Uh, tell me. How long have you you've been a guard? I... I don't know. I seem young, so maybe not very long. The wall of the vault is supposedly as strong as its door. Both did little to stop the damage of this explosion. The result is an ad hoc window to the grid below. Small sparks and, and detritus fall to the park below, as the embers of the explosion's destruction fade away. Nobody out there has any idea what happened. Right now, you're not sure they ever will. The truths you are uncovering may be swept away, buried in a vault like this one. For now, such thoughts serve no purpose. Well, all right then. Cass looks at you quizzi quizzically. There's something you're not saying. Do you know something new? I'd like to hear it if you do. Cass has always been direct with you. You owe them the same. I heard you're a new face around here. They ponder it. I thought Prince seemed strange when meeting me. A stranger, I suppose. I don't have a frame of reference, but if you say so, I believe you. They glance down at their uniform, resplendent, then take their identity disc from their back. Want to help me get to the bottom of this? You don't need to do that if you don't want to. I know, but I promise you, Query, I want to know the answer just as much as you do. Cass smiles sweetly and hands you the disc. When you take it, they put their hand on your shoulder. Aww. Thank you, friend. Maybe this will be the last time. We'll figure out that I'm a janitor and we can all go home. <laughs> Nothing wrong with being a janitor, my friend. As usual, we're gonna skip through this. Solve a disk with swapper errors, whatever that is. Okay, what do we got? 
The cell was cold, the light within it dull, purple. Cass sat at its center, cuffed and on their knees. No idea how long they'd been there. No knowledge of where there even was. The door in front of Cass opened. A figure entered, tall, silhouetted by the light behind them. You all right, kid? Light glistened against the rim of the white armor of the figure. Gold details glowing. You look cold. Cass nodded, a whisper escaping. Yes. All right, I can help you with that. The silhouette bent down to a knee, placing garments in front of Cass. Don't tell anyone where you got these. I'm not meant to fraternize. You're dangerous. Cass nodded, reaching forward with their cuffed hands, feeling for the fabric of the guard uniform dropped between them. The silhouette stepped back. Be quiet. Be safe. They can't keep you here forever. And with that, the silhouette left. The door slammed shut. Dim purple light again. That's odd. Cass falls to the ground in front of you. Oh no. Oh no. Oh yeah! You kneel down in front of them. What did you see? I saw everything. Cass is confused, their eyes darting around. They stand back up, a little unsteady. Did you see? In the cloud, did you see what I saw? You saw something. <clears throat> it was hazy, uncertain, a silhouette. A friend? Not a friend, not to begin with. No, that figure, the figure was the guard assigned to my cell. A beat, you're confused. I was a prisoner, Query, somewhere cold and dark, not this place, somewhere else. I was locked in a box for as long as I've been alive, and I've been I've been locked in a box. So how did you get here? I was transported, dropped off. I've been a prisoner for so long, the guard in my memory, he gave me this uniform, took pity on me. He said it was cold. They nod, yes. It is fascinating to me that out of all my memories, the key was a good program who did me a kindness. Well, one kindness among many cruelties. He kept me locked up. Probably helped me with my help with my transfer here. Why were you transferred? I think I'm on my way somewhere else. Cora was moving me because of what happened at the prison. A look of terrified realization crosses Cass's face. I'm the explosive. This was me. I was moved here on my way to a more secure location because it's happened before. I'm the danger. Why well, move you here then? This wasn't my final destination. This was meant to be a stop along the way. Cass is overwhelmed, scared. It's all flooding back. I need time to process it but I'm not sure the crime you were brought here to investigate happened. I think I might be in a lot of trouble. I inhale slowly. If you have questions, I can answer them. But then I think I need some space for a couple of millicycles. Let's just ask all the questions. How long were you locked up? I don't know. The memories overlap, fuse. I don't know their order, their casualty. I have no idea how long I was there before I was moved here. Tell me about the guard who gave you those clothes. These clothes. He was called Hori, I think. Kinder than he needed to be. He smuggled me in a uniform, told me it was old, nobody would miss it. It was so cold in that cell. Thank the users for his small kindness. Indeed. What causes the explosion? I, I don't know. I'm guessing it's on involuntary. I have to believe I didn't do this on purpose. They don't seem completely convinced of that, but this would be the first case you've seen where a program convinced themselves of their own innocence. A defense mechanism, maybe? I can't let anyone else get hurt tonight. I understand. A couple of the programs were talking. A pirate, right? I'm sure you had no choice. You don't need to correct them. No more questions. Go ahead and rest. 
Okay, thank you, Query. You let yourself out as Cass looks across the city through the hole they made. That's not the only gap here. There are more threads that you know you'll need to pull on before the night's over. Well, this just got uh, interesting. This doesn't add up. Yeah. Well, I guess... Uh back up to Prince's office and see what he has to say about this new information. Everything's where you left it. I would hope so. Prince stands at his desk, working on something with his back to you. Uh, I guess I can't talk to you yet. Okay, we'll go to the library then, I guess. There's a coldness to the library as you approach. Sierra sits at its center, glaring as you glaring at you as you enter. I have nothing to say to you. There. Ada, interrupted from conversation with the prisoner, turns towards you. You've had quite the evening. Things do keep happening. That does appear to be a unifying law of the grid, doesn't it? You both smile, a little exhausted. Rock structures. These grand walls and waterfalls were created from rock mined in the Outlands. They provide both a practical and symbolic function. Symbolically, these structures demonstrate cores molding and repurposing of the world around them, and their essential supremacy over the raw matter of the grid. These foreboding forms have been tamed and utilized. Practically, the specific minerals of the Outlands are untouched by the data of civilization. So, f so form a clean baseline for the library's complex data trees. They insulate the room against the noise and interference of a bustling city. It's been a long night. How are you? I'm alright. I've been shielded from much of tonight's events. I don't agree with your decision to keep Sierra here, but at least I'm not alone. Sierra groans. Sierra did nothing wrong. Thank you, Ada. We change the subject. Just go right to it. Cass caused the explosion. You tell Ada everything you know. This was all down to them? Uh, there's an aspect of this that doesn't fit. Yes, Core has no fear in rem removing dangerous programs from the grid. If it was just an uncontrollable explosion, Cass would have been disposed of immediately. Sorry, cruel terms, but accurate to Core's method methodology. Something needs to be done. Ada looks around the library. Earlier, I described this place as a garden, a curated space for information, and to an extent, that's true. Core allows me my garden because they know this data has value, more so if they keep it locked away. But that is their motivation, not mine. This one's motivation is the exact suppression you stand against, Data. Sierra stands, places a hand on the force field. He winces at the sizzle. You are the tool of an oppression you cannot comprehend, program. He turns to Ada. May I have a private conversation with this collaborator? Ada nods and walks away to investigate her trees. I'm sorry. Oh, are you? How kind. Yet I'm still here in the cage, so you're sorry but unwilling to fix it. He shakes his head. He steps back from the force field. I have learned everything I need to know about you and your friends in charge tonight. I suppose the ambassadorship was a resounding success in that regard. Uh, I hope one day we meet under better circumstances. I sincerely hope we do not. He turns his back to you. You exit the library, feeling the tension and the frustration in the room. You look to Ada to say something, but she is engrossed in her work, or trying very hard to appear so. Another time. Uh, I 
Is he gonna talk to us now? Jeez. I guess not. What the heck? Dude, I've got like vital information for you. against the landing pad. It's empty, save for a few crates. Guess not there either. The lobby? The lobby is empty. The energy falls remain beautiful. Nice place to visit on a calmer night. I am so confused right now. Talk to Cass again. The vault feels a little warmer. Cass stands by the vault, looking out over the city below as you approach. Hello. Really is beautiful up here. Cass smiles. It's more beautiful down there. The grid. So many programs fulfilling their functions, creating lives for themselves, making connections. Cass points to the city below. I want so much to go down there, be among the programs, drink some energy, ride a light cycle, maybe take in the games. I don't think I've ever had that freedom. If I did, it was a long ago. Before I got locked in a tower. Still no memory of why? None at all. I'm eager for answers, though. I'll do whatever it takes. Do you think the memories of what caused the explosion, why it's happening, are still hidden on your disk? Cass takes a deep breath. Could be, for sure. But this seems like a risky stone to turn. It might not be safe. Cass takes another deep breath. Deal with query. Take the disc from Cass and begin. It's past time to uncover their final mystery. Skip. of line. Flashes. Flickers of potential futures. A program fighting thousands of enemies, getting hurt. A cycle chased by hundreds. Glitches. Errors. Shifting realities. Repeated realities. The city falling apart. Torn apart. Great wars between programs. Resets and errors. Battles and defragmentation in the streets. And then, nothing. You both stagger a little at what you just saw. Oh no. You give this back to Cass, feel the tension flow through you. I saw it. I always see it. Oh, users. You know what you both saw. Everything falling apart. The grid itself disintegrating. De-resing into a million fractured pieces. A terrible future. What was that? Cass stumbles back from you. They're holding their head in their hands, tears in their eyes, their voice quivering. The end of everything. Collapse. Was this a different grid? This one. Explosion. A reaction. A realization. The grid is ending. It can't be stopped. Each time I realize that, I... This must be a mistake. No mistake. They locked me up because I'm the only one who sees it. I see the end of things in a data. Complex. Cause and effect. Every raindrop. Every blinking light of the city. Truth encoded. What truth? You see it too. Cass begins to shake, continuing to hold their head in their hands. The realization is tearing them apart. No time. Ask me your questions. Last chance. How long do we have? I don't know. Maybe 300 cycles? Not enough time to fix it. Cass looks defeated. Why would the grid have a limited duration? Temporary home. Flynn's backup. We were never meant to be here this long. 
he never came back. Now I know. How am I not exploding? Cass laughs. You didn't see for yourself, second hand. You trust, but you can't see. You think you can save us. Your hope blocks your destruction. We have to tell everyone. Cass smiles through the pain. Telling you, everyone has a right to know. How did it happen so fast this time? More input. You, the city. So much data. Faster realization. You can wipe your memory if you want. A small smile. That's okay. Explosion will do that anyway. I have nothing more to ask. Cass takes a deep breath. There's a flutter to their light. They're destabilizing. They walk out to the edge of the vault. Reset coming. Help me figure this out after. Okay. Stay back. Last rings through the vaults. The door to the vault is hanging off its hinge. The strongest encryption seals on the grid could not hold back whatever force exploded in here. Defrag gashes break up its surface and cast light into the room. It looks like it could fall into the void below at any moment. Whatever force did this is unimaginably dangerous, beyond any weapon you've seen in your investigations. Whoever wields it is a threat to the stability of the grid itself. You hope you can catch them. Hot light knocks you from your feet. Time itself seems to stop for a moment. You taste iron and electricity as your face smashes into the hard floor of the vault. And then silence. To stand up, dust yourself off. Sizzle of broken light echoes through the cavernous vault. And there, on the edge of the blasted vault hole, vault hole, lies the fragile figure of Cass. Place a finger on their neck. Feel the reassuring pulse of energy flow. They're unconscious, but they function. You are consumed by a need to tell someone what happened, to make it real, to communicate. Prince needs to hear about this. He'll actually let me talk to him this time. Princess Trinkets have lost some of their luster to you. Same goes for the program himself. Solved your mystery. Prince smiles. Tell me. He looks baffled. You tell them about Cass's true identity, how they've been shepherded around. You tell them about their prophecy, the end of the line. Blasphemy. How is that blasphemy? He will return to us. He made this world for us, and he will return. The prince closes the gap between you quickly. I know you fight for the users. I know you're a program of faith. When did that fall away? We cannot let doubt in. We cannot break from his, his patterns. He will return, and he will, yeah, he will help us to bring about a new age. It's been well over a thousand cycles, Prince. No! Our time move, moves faster than his. His preparations may take time. They may seem cruel in their duration, but he serves us. He slams a fist into his altar. Prince is shaking, anger at you, or maybe even at Flynn himself. He will come back to us. This world was never meant to last forever. Perhaps. His body relaxes a little. The outburst seems to have relieved some tension for him. I'm sorry, Query. It's hard to hear some of what you what you say. Terrifying. There has to be a solution. Prince frowns. Does there? I admire your instinct to play savior. I really do. At least you take each case on its own merits. You are wise to leave the automata spy in our custody. 
case isn't closed. No, I suppose not. Things could have gone very differently tonight, Query. I'm grateful to you for most of your decisions. I know your vows. I know it can't have been easy for you to intervene. My choices were logical, in my opinion. I'm sure. I fear we are rap rapidly approaching a goodbye. I need your help. He chuckles. With what now? Take a deep breath. I'm going to free Cass. Prince frowns. Even after what you've seen they're capable of? You didn't flick that upon the grid? We need to see change. I'm not sure you've thought through every consequence. You may want to weigh that, weigh that up before the time comes. Prince gestures at the door. Grish left just before you arrived, checking on programs, securing the building, doing what needs to be done now your new friend is exploding on a more regular basis. He's scared, putting on a brave yet angry face, but scared I am too. We all are. He walks over to one of his shelves, inspects the contents as he talks. This place represents order, Query. It is a manifestation of an ideal at the heart of core. Every item in its place, every program fulfilling their role. Cast represents something different. They represent chaos, the lightning in the storm. This is what scares us so. Grish may have a soft spot for you, but your decisions since beginning the investigation put everything he strives to protect at risk. Although he was fond of your decision to de-res the pride of the pirate. It pauses for what it feels like an eternity. I have no interest in pre presenting a barrier to what needs to happen next. You'll let me take Cass from this place? Prince nods. Well, that's good. The explosions are unprecedented, and my facilities cannot handle them. Core created a situation we couldn't handle. As far as I'm concerned, they already escaped during this second explosion. Ah, I can deal with the consequences. I would encourage you to consider your options before making your final decisions tonight, or final choices tonight. But yes, I will stay out of your way. Take one last look around at the knickknacks and pointless detritus of the users of Flynn. The world outside doesn't even know this place exists. This pomp is a call without, res without a response. Love unrequited. There is a tragedy to Prince and his zealotry. You hope for his sake that he finds another path one day. You leave, knowing that there's only one place you need to be. All right, everyone, I think on that uh, cliffhanger, I think I'm going to end this episode. We'll uh, come back in the next one, and it uh, seems like we're going to finish up the story. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Please like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me out. And uh, keep it radical. I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.